Havana, Cuba in 1927 was a perfect place for stars to begin a new tradition. A warm, windy, tropical place where there was no prohibition. The Bacardi Series, now known as the Bacardi Cup, started its long reach into the present day. Hosted at the Coral Reef Yacht Club since the Cuban Revolution, this regatta has become as much of a spectacle and staple as the World Championships. It's the beginning of the week, so the first party is always the best. The Star Sailors have been doing it for 87 years, I think it says on the Bill of Mike hat. I want to welcome everybody to the uh, Bacardi Americas headquarters. It's always great having you all here. The 87th Bacardi Cup. We're really proud of the cup and we thank you all for participating. We try to treat them specially because Bacardi Miami Sailing Week actually camps on the Bacardi Cup. We used the Bacardi Cup as our premier feature in the beginning so that we had a large regatta and could work to build from that. Skippers and crews from all over the world, drawing from the America's Cup, dinghy Olympic medalists, and Balfo Ocean Race pool of competitors began their week of racing in some light conditions. With only one race per day, the weight of the start and every mark rounding increased tenfold. Each star was pointed towards the podium, they had to consider every variable in the breeze and plan ahead for every pile up at the turns. With over one mile legs, the top of the fleet saw some familiar faces, but also some new faces. Well, I'm Mark Reynolds, and uh, I've been coming here since 1983, so uh, uh, it's been a few years. And I'm Brad Funk, and uh, yeah, I just came, to, came here to sail the star and check out the scene, and um, yeah, having fun. Well. I kind of don't know anything else because I grew up sailing a star. It's a pretty technical boat in a lot of ways, but uh, we were just talking about it. It's a very tactical boat as well, and if you just sail the boat tactically, uh, you're going to do well in the races, and Brad showed that yesterday by being in the top five. As the week progressed, the wind slowly increased. 55 stars ran the gauntlet for the 87th Bacardi Cup and watched the Brazilian brothers of Lars and Torben Grail and the tide for first most winning is skipper, Mark Reynolds, get richer and richer. So the rigging is very uh, complex, but it's a lovely boat, and, uh, beautiful style, glamour and tradition, history. It's a class that uh, you can find uh, the most uh, famous uh, the heroes of the sailing sport. Win a race at Bacardi Cup is already a challenge for all of us, so it's very nice to be competing on the star class. Wednesday was where the Bacardi Cup met five more fleets of one design keelboats to make it officially the fifth Bacardi Miami Sailing Week. Studio Milano welcomed the rest of the regatta at the Bacardi Village in Kennedy Park with Bacardi rum, vendors, and physical trainers to keep everyone in one piece. Nearby Coconut Grove spread the regatta's footprint by presenting Color to the Grove, a project where street artists were given sail shapes to paint their art on to display to passers-by. Back out on the water, the up-and-coming J-70 fleet shared the city front course with the VET Viper 640s and the brand new VX-1 class. The VX-1s uh, contacted us because we were gaining popularity amongst the sailors and they wanted to see if they could join the fleet this year. Um, we made it difficult for them. We told them they needed to have 20 boats registered by the early entry date and they did it. That's a whole 22 more boats than we had. The J-70s have 20 more boats this year. So we have a lot more boats on shore and storage in the water. Next year, because of the amount of boats we're at, we should probably break off and have four circles. So we'll be growing again. On the center course, the media got a front row seat to some incredible acceleration performances in the Melgus fleets. Friday, the breeze found its climax of the story with 22 knots of breeze gusting up to 27. The Melgus 20 fleet had the second biggest fleet behind the stars and was littered with pros and Rolex sailors of the year. Samba Pati looked to be tough to beat, posting a 3-3-4-1. Taylor's Ninkasi, Braid's Pacific Yankee, and Russ Lucas's Shimmer literally pushed and shoved to get their turn on the playground swing. Rubbin is racing. Unfortunately, the boat's lack of backstay came out to haunt at least six of the boats, including Samba Pati. This was the last time anyone saw that mast upright. John Taylor and crew ended up on top. Yesterday was probably one of the more exciting days we've ever had sailing out there with 25 knots. I think we saw 15, 18 knots of boat speed, so it was great fun. 
A lot of wild conditions, but we had a good regatta. In the Melly's 24 class, Kevin Welsh's boat with Jeff Madrigali driving overtook the Italians happily for the first place trophy. The city front course was only able to get in three races each. Will Wells and his J70 Rascal, who placed third last year, pulled off a great series to tie last year's champion Savasana first and easily win the tiebreaker. The dethroning didn't end there. Phil Lotz's Arethusa didn't want to land second to Jackpot again this year and slipped in a 2-1-2 to make Jackpot take a step down on the podium. And for the inaugural VX1 participation in the event, a few boats from Alabama mixed it up in the front. Donovan Brennan and his crew aboard Team Smuggler were able to pin their names on the first place trophy. The Bacardi Cup went to a new champion this year. Lars Grail, who'd been waiting in the wings for this victory, arrived on stage with his crew, Samuel Gonsalves, to accept the skipper and crew trophies. Their names will appear with 2014 written next to them and perhaps not for the last time. Tito Bacardi was there in spirit for the pouring of Bacardi rum into the skipper trophy and shared on stage amongst their peers.